Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Kristen Jezik and I talk about everything self-care and this week I'm bringing you another video about the work of Byron Katie. So if you have ever had the thought that they should love me for me, this is a great one to watch, a great one to work through if that has caused you any stress in your life as I know it did for me. So this is somewhat of a continuation from this video that I did on regret. So someone had posed a question, what to do when you wanna do the work on regret? And I talked about going back to the moment you made the decision and looking at what you believed. And I also talked about going to the present moment and what you think will happen in the future based on where you are now, based on a decision you made that you regret. So this is going to be a deep dive into what I was thinking when I made the decision that I ended up regretting. And I would recommend going checking out that video first so you know what we're going to talk about, but if not, it still applies. So uh, just a summary of what we're going to talk about today is I had cut my hair, totally changed my appearance, and at the time I was working in the entertainment industry and it really mattered what I looked like as far as matching my headshots. And I had gotten really upset in my life and really depressed and I cut off all my hair and I cut bangs and I dyed it really dark. And it looked nothing like my headshots and I, I wasn't working and there was a lot going on. So I was looking at my thoughts of what I thought other people thought of me, what I thought people wanted from me. And a thought that kept coming up was I wanted people to love me for me. And whether that was in work or in my relationships or in my personal life or in anything I did, I wanted people, experiences, industry, the industry to love me for me. It was really painful. So in this situation, I am looking at people and I am putting this on people because that was as general and specific as I could make it because I knew it was, the, you know, my romantic relationships, my friendships, my family, my work. I wanted everyone to love me for me. And I kind of grew up hearing this over and over again, whether it was in TV shows or well-meaning friends, and it is a wonderful concept, you know, having people love you for you. Um, but if it's painful, it's worth questioning. If you feel like people aren't loving you for you, it's worth questioning. So I'm gonna walk you through the work on the statement, I want people or I need people to love me for me. And I am going to start by doing the four questions and then the turnarounds. So as a refresher, if you're new to the work, the four questions are, is it true? Can you absolutely know it's true? How do you react when you believe the thought? And who would you be without the thought? So looking at the first question, is it true? I need people to love me for me. And I'm looking based on where I was in that moment that I made this decision, where I was believing I needed and wanted people to love me for me. So if I go to that situation, is it true that I need people to love me for me? I'm coming up with a yes. The first answer to the first and second questions are either yes or no. And this is really a meditative process. So you want to just Go within yourself and get an honest answer. So my first answer is yes. I really believed that it was true that I wanted and needed someone to love me for me. Now the second question is, can you absolutely know it's true? And because I've done this, it might go a little bit faster in this video than when you're sitting in it, but I want you, if you're questioning this, to feel free to take as much time as you want. I've sat in, is it true? for days to a certain thought before. So it isn't about coming to an immediate yes or no, it's about coming to an honest answer within yourself. So I cannot absolutely know it's true. I remember being all over the place at this time in my life. This was maybe nine, eight years ago. And I was all over the place. I was reaching for things that I thought were gonna make me happy. And I can't absolutely know it's true that if people loved me for me, that that would make me happy. Because looking at it, I don't even know if I could get out of my head long enough to see if people loved me for me. So I can't absolutely know it's true. The third question is, how do you react when you believe the thought? 
And if you watched my last video, you understand that my reaction was based out of what I was thinking at that time. So that's why I say to question at this stage when you regret something. But at the time, the way I reacted was I would really push people away because I thought they didn't love me for me. I would not put myself out there in my career. I remember being afraid to go to auditions and being afraid to work jobs that I had even booked because I was questioning motives of why people wanted me there. And if they really wanted me for me, if they loved me for me, um, I remember not wanting to go out on dates. I remember pushing friends away. I cut all my hair off and I dyed it. I mean, this is how I reacted when I believed the thought and wanted people to love me for me. And I felt like they didn't. So who would I be without the thought? I want people to love me for me. Now, at this time in my life, it was so ingrained in me that I wanted people to love me for me that I genuinely don't know who I would have been without that thought. And that's okay. It's okay to be experiencing something and have it be so a part of who you believe you are that without that thought, without that identity, it's really hard to imagine who you would be. I had this comment, or I had this conversation, a similar conversation in the comments last this last week. So that is a great place to drop any questions you have for me and comment below if anything's coming up for you now. And be sure to like the video so I know you're still watching and that this is helping you guys. Okay, so um, at the time I don't think I even knew who I would be because I really believed this was like a virtuous thought to believe I wanted people to love me for me. And um, I'm just not sure who I would be, but looking back on how I reacted when I believed it, just the opposite of how I reacted might have been true. I might have um, gone to more auditions, put myself out there, got to know the people around me more, the people I was working with, the people who were my friends, um, relationships, I might have gone on more dates, I might have put myself out there in my career, in my personal life, um, I might have gotten to know myself better and know other people better and actually heard what they had to say and gotten to experience you know, what people did love me for, because I certainly had wonderful people in my life who, looking back on it, really cared for me, even if I was kind of shut off to that at the time. So I would have just gotten to experience more of life. That's who I would be without the thought. So now I'm going to do the turnarounds. So my first turnaround is I need people to love me for me, is I don't need people to love me for me. Now, where is that true? Well, they, in my mind, they didn't, and I was just fine. Um, in my mind, you know, no one was loving me for me, and I thought they wanted me for the way I looked in work, or um, they wanted me for entertainment, or they wanted me for something I could give them, or they wanted me to be something that I wasn't. And so in my mind, that they weren't loving me for me and I was okay. I mean, I didn't feel great. I certainly had a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression at this time in my life, but I was okay. You know, I was breathing. I could look at myself in my apartment at that time. I loved my apartment. Um, I, I loved what I was doing when I wasn't in my head. Um, so I didn't need people to love me for me. That's for sure. Um, okay, so another turnaround for I need people to love me for me. And I'm trying to stay grounded, just as a side note, I'm trying to stay grounded in that moment. So I'm not doing it from where I am now because I'm looking in that moment what I was believing and what the situation was in that moment. So my life looks totally different now. I'm not doing it from here. I'm doing it from that moment. Why in that moment I did not need people to love me for me. Okay, so another turnaround of I need people to love me for me is I need me to love me for me. This is emotional. I mean, this work is really emotional, guys, so it's a good release, but um, at that time, I really did need that. I really 
needed me to get to know myself. I was 21 or 22 years old. I really needed me to love who that person was that I was at that time. And I really needed me to value other parts of myself other than the way I looked or what I thought I could provide people or trying to please people being what I thought they wanted. What I really needed was to love me for me. And I didn't put that time in. I was so focused on what other people were thinking that I didn't take the time to love me for me. I beat myself up a lot mentally. I replayed stressful situations in my head. Like I said before, I had a lot of depression and anxiety. And, you know, at the time, I just wasn't taking the time to love me for me. And as a sidebar to anyone who's watching this, it is so valuable to feel that love for yourself. I didn't remember ever hearing that growing up. I remember hearing, you know, find people who love you for you, find find a job that loves you back or, or whatever it was. Um, certainly in romantic relationships, I heard you've got to find someone who loves you for you. And that's wonderful. I, I'm not saying cut people off. I'm not saying don't find someone who loves you for you. But I'm saying in my life, if I couldn't love myself, I couldn't accept that love from other people because I always thought there was a motive. I always thought there was something else that they wanted from me, but it wasn't me because I didn't, I wasn't loving me for me at that time. So it, it was out of my comprehension to believe other people could really be loving me for me as well. So I really needed me to love me for me. The third turnaround I found for this is I need me to love people for who they are. And that's really, that's a life's work for me, or at least it felt like that at that time. I remember having so many beliefs on what the entertainment industry should be. I had so many beliefs on what I wanted in a partner. I had so many beliefs in what I wanted in friends and work and playtime and hobbies. I had so many beliefs that about other people and how they should be that I couldn't meet them where they were. And I see that in that moment, whether someone loved me or loved me for me or whatever I was believing, it was my job to love them for who they are. And that doesn't mean spend time with them. That doesn't mean pursue that career. That doesn't mean put myself in a bad situation for someone who I feel is physically or emotionally harmful to me. That just means loving and respecting them and their journey and who they are and loving myself in the process. So if that includes choosing another industry because I, pic I pictured that industry as being really cruel, then that's what I could do for myself. But there's no reason to hate an industry or believe onto them because it just doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't provide me much, but loving people where they are and supporting them in where they are really opens, opened up my mind to meet people and to really see what they're like and what they value. And if they do love me and if they love me for me or whatever it is, but just letting people be who they are, that takes a lot of pressure off me. That takes a lot of pressure off relationships. And it certainly feels good. And that is definitely what I needed at that time. So that is my third turnaround. You can dig and look for more. Please let me know in the comments below if you've come up with another turnaround for this. Um, this is certainly a powerful one belief at a time to work on. And I know in my life it was very prevalent. So if it was prevalent in your life, if you heard this growing up, if this helped you anyway, please comment below, let me know. I love talking to you guys there. I love hearing your experiences. And if there's any other questions, this video is a result of a question that I got in the comments So and a request. So if you have any other requests, any other thoughts that you wanna work through or you want me to work through on a video, I've probably had them. Thoughts are pretty universal. Just let me know and I will do my best to make a video for you guys or at least respond to you in the comments. It's a great place to chat. And if you are new here, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications every time I post a new video, and I will see you guys soon.